This is a rubber plant. This is a rubber plant. And this is a rubber plant. And just for you, I put together this video in which I'll reveal a list of seven things you should be doing to care for this beautiful, glossy, large leaf house plant that just like you, everyone seems to want. I'm doing this so that you can care for your plant and spot trouble before it happens. And by the time this video is over, your plants will look like this. Well, that's a stretch, but you'll definitely get it to thrive. Make sure you watch this video until the end so you don't miss any of the steps. Okay, so if you really want to take care of your rubber plant, also known as Ficus elastica, just like every other house plant, we need to start by providing it with proper lighting. And when it comes to rubber plants, their ideal spot as an indoor house plant is bright indirect light, either under grow lights or next to a bright window where it can see the clouds. That being said, some varieties like the Burgundy and Robusta, or those that don't have any variegation, can tolerate lower lighting conditions. But just know they won't grow as fast as they would if they were under higher lighting. And they won't grow as strong and healthy. Now that we got that straight, I'm gonna go out on a limb here. And take a second here to debunk a myth going around about rubber plants that says they cannot tolerate direct sunlight because it scorches the leaves. And that's only half true. Let me prove it. Here it is in full sun, and here it is again in full sun. So if your climate allows it and you wanna give it a try, the trick to growing them in full sun is to slowly acclimate them to the higher lighting conditions. And this goes for most plants. Okay, so now we placed our favorite plant this week in the right spot, but how do you water it so it doesn't get those crispy edges? The trick here is to allow the soil to become 50% dry and then water it. It's not a succulent, so don't stick it in a corner and forget about it. If that's how you roll, then I suggest looking into a snake plant or ZZ plant. And it's not a peace lily Please help. that begs you for water every time you walk by. So allow it time to dry out some. The way I check if my rubber plants need water is by grabbing my trusty water meter and watering when the meter reads 50%. Always considering that the plant rather be a bit drier than wetter. Is wetter even a word? Yep, whether we like it or not. Sorry, bad dad joke. Now with our plants sitting pretty and hydrated, we move on to humidity and temperature in which the average home is perfectly acceptable for them as long as we don't go to the extremes. Keep in mind, rubber plants along with most of the house plants we like to keep are tropical plants and they prefer warm humid conditions. Rubber plants in particular are native to the rainforest of Southeast Asia where rain falls year round. So the higher the humidity and temperature to a certain level, the better they'll do. So in a nutshell, as long as you keep humidity levels above 50% and temperatures between 60 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 to 27 degrees Celsius, and avoid exposing it to sudden temperature fluctuations or drafts, they'll love you for it. Now, occasionally your plant may need to be repotted, and this is usually the case when it's either outgrown its existing pot and you start to see that it's becoming root bound or the soil is compact. So when repotting, the best place to start is by choosing the right pot. And the right pot is one that's one size up from the pot the plant is in currently as it provides room for growth without overwhelming the plant. And also make sure your pot has drainage holes. Drainage holes will allow excess water to escape and prevent the roots from sitting in water, which can lead to root rot. Next, you wanna choose the right soil mix for your rubber plant. Even though they're not too picky, a great mix that would get them to thrive would be a mix of one part core or peat, one part pine bark, and one part perlite. This mix will allow the plant to have water readily available as long as you water when the soil is 50% dry. And it'll also provide the drainage the plant needs when you decide to water every day for 30 days straight. No, really, don't do that. Ow! Now pruning is essential for maintaining all plants, but when it comes to rubber plants, it goes to a whole new level. And this is because for the most part, unless you prune it or the dog runs into it and breaks the stem, It'll continue to grow straight up like Jack and the Beanstalk. So if you have a standard single leader like this, the way you prune it would be to make the cut at about the halfway point where you want the head of the plant to be. So in this example, if we were to make our cut here, we would see breaks start to grow here and eventually this new growth would become stems and form a nice full head on our plant. If we have a plant that's in bush form, then just work on trimming off any dead or yellowing leaves to encourage new growth. And you can also shape your plant by cutting back leggy stems to give it some shape. Now in regards to fertilizing your rubber plants, I recommend you fertilize them about once a month while they're growing with a general houseplant fertilizer that contains macro and micronutrients. How do you know if it has them? Just look at the label and look for nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and these other little goodies that'll have your plant screaming with excitement. 
Also, at least once every two months, I recommend you take your plant in the shower or outside to a hose and leach the soil with a volume of water that's double the size of your pot. This will eliminate any excess salts that may have built up because of the use of tap water or even excess fertilizer. And while you're doing this, also gently spray the leaves to help clean them of any dust they might have and remove any unwanted pests that may be hiding in the nooks and crannies. That being said, rubber plants are tough, but they are susceptible to pests like most house plants, with the most common you'll find on them being mites and mealybugs. To look for them, just look closely at the stems, leaves, underside of the leaves, and even pop it out of the pot and look at the soil. You can sometimes find mealybugs there. If you do find them, then what I do is spray them down with a solution made up of one gallon of water, one tablespoon of dishwashing liquid, and a couple drops of peppermint oil. This will help a little with control, but then if you want long-term control, add a bit of systemic pesticide to the soil by digging a small hole in the soil, applying the pesticide at the rate recommended, and covering it back up. Also, besides mites and mealybugs, look out for fungus gnats. Or in most cases, you may not have to look for them, they actually look for you. They're a huge nuisance and in large enough numbers can harm your plants. So be sure to watch this video next so you keep them away from your rubber plants and the rest of your house plants.